Hi, this is Phil Hinton for avforums.tv and welcome to the first of two videos on room acoustics. To understand the problem that every room has, I met up with Rob Sindon from Gecko and the first thing I asked Rob was how much of an influence does he think the room has on sound reproduction? I think still the biggest problem is the, the fact that people think good equipment alone is what will give you good sound quality and good picture quality. Um, and what I've been trying to do for years is minimise the effect that the room has on the system. Um, a lot of people have very good equipment, but they don't necessarily end up with good results because of the way that the room compromises the sound of the system, of, of, of the, the speaker's performance. Um, I think most people are familiar, if they've had a good hi-fi for years and they've moved home or they've moved it from room to room, it'll sound quite different from room to room. And if you magnify that effect up, uh, with a multi-channel system, you can end up with very indifferent results from very good equipment um, because of the acoustics of the space. Now, we are talking about acoustics, so there is an element of science behind that, and that may scare people away from from even broaching the subject. Yep. You also hear the fact that there's a, an element of wife acceptance factor mm -hmm. that comes in there. So what things could people do to improve their acoustic performance in a room? Well, if, if we can um, just briefly talk about the, the, the science of it before getting on to, to, to the solutions or potential solutions, um, because I'm sure most people don't want foam on the walls in the living rooms, and that's what acoustic treatment people tend to think of. Um, I draw the analogy of um, a car in your garage how it sounds in the garage when you start it up, when it's outside on the drive, when it's driving through a tunnel. It sounds quite different in one space to the next. Um, if, turn it around again, if I phone you up, I'm on the phone, I'm on my mobile, you can probably tell that I might be in my kitchen, in my bedroom, outside. Just from listening to my voice in this dreadful little speaker in the phone, you can hear the difference, of, you can guess where I am by the, by the acoustics of the space that I'm in. People are, are, are very attuned, we, we naturally learn a lot about our environment from the acoustics of the space that we're in and you can hear that even over a, 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 a very cheap speaker on a phone. So that's one of the analogies I try to draw people's attention to. You can, you can really are aware how much difference um, the space makes the sound of your voice, let alone a high quality hi-fi system. So that's, that's one of the things I do to try and point out how important the acoustics are to people. In terms of uh, um, making changes to the system um, or the room, um, it, in an ideal world, uh, if you're having a dedicated theatre room, then you'd start by looking at the, the acoustic problems that you might have in the space and then looking at um, diffusers or absorbers that you can put into the space to, to stop too much sound bouncing around. In the average home, no one wants to see that. So this is why there are a number of other possibilities that, that we try and look at that we think will be both effective um, and acceptable in the home. A again, w what we try and do is, is look at the best solution for the particular application people have. Um, very often in a hi-fi system it might be something as simple as putting a rug on the floor if there's a hard floor there might be too reflected too much reflected sound off the floor and um, simply by putting a rug on the floor or a bookcase on the side wall that can ensure that you hear more direct sound from the speaker than reflected sound from the room and that can be all that's required sometimes to, to make the difference between okay sound and good sound when you get onto home theatre um, there, are, there tend to be other problems associated with it because home theatre systems are often played louder with more bass response. Um, it, the, the bass that you get from your home theatre system is such a big part of the experience. And the low frequency that subwoofers put into a room create other problems and you need to be looking at other methods of correcting the bass rather than putting treatment on the walls or um, which again leads us on to, to electronic devices uh, which can help correct both the bass performance and the mid and high frequency performance. 
So I would, if, if you start looking at methods of reducing acoustic problems in the room, I, I think it's worthwhile looking at the difference between mid and high frequency and bass frequency. Without wanting to get too technical, they have, they, they both create different issues and some are relatively easily fixed by the addition of perhaps a, a rug or a pair of curtains in the room. Bass waves are much, much longer and so will, won't be affected by something like a rug on the floor. So you have to look at a different approach depending on the problem you have on your room. Uh, there are two methods that I think are practical and, and effective. The first is base management. Most of us are familiar with sub-satellite packages and generally they're thought of as a, a cheap alternative to big serious hi-fi speakers. But the, the, the reason sub-satellite first started up, first gained po popularity, is because by having all your bass played in a particular, in a subwoofer and being able to move the subwoofer around the room and adjust its level, you can optimise your bass performance to, to match that of your room. So the reason Subsat got started originally was for technical benefits. Obviously um, there are certain manufacturers that use that approach because it allows for a more discreet installation but there are actual technical benefits to using separate subwoofers and putting all your bass there rather than using loud, bit bigger loudspeakers. The other approach that is, is gaining popularity is um, equalisation and they're very effective at reducing bass problems in a room. So in the bass world I think sub-satellite, having all your bass directed to a separate subwoofer that can be moved and adjusted to the room is one of the most practical methods and beyond that um, equalisation. I have heard it said on the forums that uh, the main reason that people feel that uh, acoustical treatments within the room uh, may not be ideal is because of the, the, the wife acceptance factor. And we've discussed things like rugs and, mm -hmm. and so on adding into the room. But um, before we get too technical in terms, there are other bits of furniture that we can use within the living room or the living space that, that can help the acoustical performance. Yeah, the, typically the biggest problem um, in mid and high frequency is that you'll be getting too much reflected sound off the sidewalls. And if you've done any training with THX or HAA, um, you'll be familiar with the trick of putting a, a mirror on the sidewall. So if I'm a speaker, you're a listener, you have a mirror here and where you can see the speaker, that's the point in the room that you need to treat to stop sound being reflected. Um, and that will ensure that you hear the direct sound from the speaker without too much reflected sound off the wall. So recognising the point in your room that needs treating is, is the first step. And then typically you'll have a, a, a hard section of wall, hard plaster wall. And what you're looking to do is diffuse the sound that hits there or absorb it. Um, a bookcase is very effective at doing that. Um, open shelving is very effective at doing that. You want to make sure that the, the, the wave that hits it is dispersed and anything that's uneven that it hits will help in that. So it doesn't have to be uh, a, a bit of foam that's designed for a recording studio. Anything that breaks up that sound wave when it hits the wall is going to help. So once you recognise the problem in the room, uh, it then becomes something that you try and address with aesthetics. Sometimes we put would put a movie poster on a wall with some acoustic treatment behind it. So it looks like a decorative feature of the room, but actually it's there to make sure that the, the sound isn't reflecting around the room too much. The, the, the room that the system is used in will change the sound that's coming out of the loudspeaker, so what you hear at the listening position is very, very different from the sound that the system produces.